Hallelujah. Praise we thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to have the children marching. So I'm going to ask them to put that song. They're not yet ready. Okay, that's okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's praise rise from the inside. From the inside of me. Come be. From the inside, from the inside of me, may you delight from the inside, from the inside.
glorify your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed, blessed be the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be you. choruses and while we sing the children's choir will be marching in hallelujah the children, the children have a song the children have a song when i grow up i'm going to be the next prime minister hey when i grow up i'm going to be the next prime minister when I grow up, I like to be a pilot. Hey, when I grow up, I would like to be a cricketer. A doctor, a teacher. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jesus. My name is Sister Marsha Lee Brown. My name is Ryan, My name is Ryan Markham Jr. And we will be your moderator for, for today. today. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Now we're going to have our scripture reading by Father Timon. Kedra Dane McNaught, and the reading will be taken from Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 10. Shall we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we'll have the declaration of faith by Janoy Henry and Kevania Dodd, followed by the welcome by Brother Ajani Lati and Sister Kemaya Brown. You'll come in that order, please. our declaration of faith. The Church of God believes the whole Bible to be completely and equally inspired, and that it is the written word of God. The Church of God has adopted the following declaration of faith as its standard and official expression of its doctrine. We 
You know, Kimaya, I was wondering the same thing. How can we survive without the presence of the Lord? We simply can't. The Lord is our firm foundation, and we are here to acknowledge him. First, we would like to acknowledge the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is the head of our life. With the members on our right, please stand if you can and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Would the members in the center, if you can stand, stand and give me a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And can the members on our left please stand and shout glory. Sister Karine Ferdinand and their beautiful family. They are trustworthy, hardworking, and determined. Let us acknowledge our council members and their beautiful families. We would like to acknowledge at this time our special guests worshiping with us this morning. First, we have our national 
Women's president, Ministry President, Dr. Vinet Notice, our Regional Women's Ministry Director for the Greater Caribbean, Lady, Lady Patricia Charles, and our National Women's Ministry Executive Member, Lady Paula Plummer. Can you please stand and we'll Let us acknowledge our hardworking, responsible, and focused secretarial team, our meticulous, organized, hardworking treasury team, and we would like to acknowledge the persons who provide delicious meals and snacks, our nutrition team. The melodious, gifted, dedicated, and harmonious praise and worship team. These people are genius, skillful, and gifted to let us acknowledge our technical team, and we are asking if the musicians can worship the Lord using their instruments. can't exclude our organized, punctual, and helpful guardsmen and women at the doors, our ushers. Don't forget that today is Children's Sunday, so you must not forget our young, talented, vibrant, and energetic gems, God's extraordinary ministers. Last but not least, our lovely members, both in the sanctuary and watching us live, we hope you are enjoying our service this far. And there are many, there are a few visiting friends with us today. We have Ewa Lee Levington, which is Sister Notice's mother. Can you please wave your hand? We have Sister Marine Bennett, and we have Dean Martin. You know, Kimaya, it is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, man, it really is. This day, this is the day that the Lord has made, so we must rejoice. We, we pray, pray for, for you, you both. A blessed, a blessed day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm sure we're all feeling welcome at this time, but we want to give special welcome to Sister Ruth Dodd, who's back with us over there yes, yes, yes. in the cold, back in the heat. Sister Ruth, can you stand and wave for us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Reverend Small's family is here, his wife and children are here with us today, worshiping with us today. Shall we bless the Lord for them? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we're going to have the prayer by Brother Timon Appleton. Appleton at this time. Brother Appleton will be coming to us at this time with our prayer. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, O oh God Almighty, that you have made a day in which we could come into the sanctuary to worship your holy and matchless name. Lord, as we are about, O oh God Almighty, to fellowship, to worship, to bow down to your mercy, and your grace, your awesomeness, O oh God. We pray, Almighty God, that you will cleanse our hearts even now. That, O oh God Almighty, every form of distraction, O oh God, we cancel it even now, O oh God Almighty. The scripture says that we must turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. That the things of this earth will go strangely dim. 
in the light of his glory and your grace. So God Almighty, all the distractions, all the things that bother us, so God Almighty, all the things, oh God Almighty, that we worry about, oh God, we bring it before you even now today. And we give you our full attention even now. Lord, we pray, almighty God, that every demonic entity, every satanic agenda, oh God almighty, that would want to disrupt this service, we cancel it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We render every powers that is not of you null and void in the name of Jesus. And we tell them today, oh God almighty, that you are the king of kings, that you are the lord of lords, and that you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And we worship you and you alone. Lord, oh God Almighty, we turn back every fiery darts of the enemy this morning. We turn back, oh God Almighty, and break every shackles in the name of Jesus. Everything, oh God Almighty, that will want to distract any unsafe here to come to the altar. We bind it up even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we pray, almighty God, that as your words go forth, almighty God, that hearts will be stirred up, oh God Almighty. That hearts will be conflicted. Con convicted, oh God Almighty, that hearts, oh God Almighty, will be attracted, oh God Almighty, to the plans that you have for them. Plans, oh God Almighty, not to make them suffer. Plans, oh God Almighty, to give them a hope and a future. So Lord, I pray that the words that will come forth out of your servant's mouth, oh God Almighty, will be the words coming from your very own breath. Oh God Almighty, that the breath of life, oh God, may take position in the hearts and the minds of your people. That they will want to see themselves in your will and your way, oh God Almighty. Lord, I pray, dear Lord Jesus, that the will of the enemy will be distasteful in the mind and the heart of the people. Oh God Almighty, let them see themselves as a son and daughter of God. God, Lord, we pray, almighty God, uh, that anything, oh God almighty, that we want to stop or distract that, oh God, uh, will be canceled even now. Uh, Lord, we pray, oh God, that your full power, your full glory will reign supreme in this temple right now, oh God, uh, as we give our hearts to you. As we give our minds to you, O oh God Almighty, we pray, O oh God Almighty, for you said in your word where two or more are gathered, uh, touching anything concerning you, you will be in the midst. Uh, and if you are in the midst to bless, O oh God Almighty, darkness cannot reign, O oh God. So we pray, Almighty oh God, uh, that we will minimize, O oh God Almighty, uh, they, they, they the space for darkness uh, and we will enlarge oh God uh, almighty your territory in this place uh, Lord oh God let your train fill this temple mighty God your name. 
in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. the children to go and get ready at this time for their um, yeah. performance. And we're just going to tell you what to, the theme is for today. We forgot to tell the theme, RJ. What is the theme for today? God's gift. Gems equipped to, sp to, to spare the so gospel. So it's God's gifted gems equipped to spread the gospel. And what does gem mean, RJ? God's extraordinary mister ministers. God's extraordinary ministers. These are God's extraordinary ministers this morning. And we're going to sing this little song, even though they're going to get ready. But we're going to sing this little song, Bigfoot, Little Foot. You know that, right, RJ? So we're going to sing that. Bigfoot, little foot, it doesn't matter. Bigfoot, little foot, it doesn't matter. Bigfoot, little foot, it doesn't matter. Walking down the king's highway. matter this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Now we're going to have our congregational hymn, which is hymn 157. Trust and obey him. So hymn 157, congregational hymn, trust and obey. Praise him. What, what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory.
going to have greetings at this time by Dr. Vinette Notice, who is our National, National Women's, Women's Ministry President. President. Followed by that, we'll have ministry in, so in dance, which will be done by God's extraordinary ministers. Hallelujah. Can we give the moderators, especially this young man, uh, encouragement and just appreciation. It's always such a blessing to be with God's people. It's even more special to be with the, I'm going to say the next generation, but they are the generation. And it, it is, yes, man, recognize and acknowledge. And, and they are busy up here doing all kinds of stuff playing keyboards and drums and chatting with each other and quite oblivious that they are on the front page, but that's what children do, and, and that's fine. And so when we go home and we take, we take them home today and we say, remember now, you know, we could have done this a little different, but don't, don't fuss with them because the truth is we don't have them up here every Sunday. So they kind of just do the thing that they used to do when they are down there. And in fact, too, you know, in all fairness, they're doing what they see us do up here. So let's bear that in mind. Let's not crucify them and be too hard on them. But I'm really privileged and blessed to be here today. My, my, the second time in the same month. Because I came the first Sunday when you were introducing your, when you're meeting your new pastor. And this being the last Sunday in September, I'm here with you again. And, and it's so such an honor to be here. And we felt that it was Sister Lady Patricia Charles came to Jamaica just to be with us in our Women's Ministries Leadership Conference. And we were like, all right, we, we church, we should take her to, to serve, to, to, to worship, and to, to bring the word to one Sunday. And, uh, you know, Bull Bay came to mind. And, you know, Sister Ferdinand was concerned that, but Lady so Women Sunday gone already. And, you know, today she said, no, man, Lady Pat, no, no, she don't watch no face. She don't, no worry about that. She cool her article, as you can see. Make the children them run them team. Make the children them run. It don't mean nothing. She will bring the word to chat man, child, woman, everybody. Not setting your play the chance. But she's such a powerful woman of God. She's my boss. The administrative bishop is my boss in Jamaica. But she's my boss in the Caribbean. I report directly to her. And it is such a privilege serving and working with her. Just a humble servant of God, anointed. And I really deem it an honor, people of God, to be serving in Jamaica in the women's ministry in this season. God is good. And he is faithful. And I know that you have been praying for me. I know you have been praying for Sister Ferdinand. By the way, Sister Ferdinand on my executive, you know. So she is working with me. And that's why I only get a little boss and get Sister Charles. <laughs> but I know that God is doing a new thing. Not just in the women's ministry, but in the church of God. In our children's ministry. In our lives. So ladies and gentlemen... Just hold on, man. Yesterday at the women's conference, Sister Charles spoke about stand. And she spoke about certain things that she encouraged us as women to do. And so I'm encouraging us just to press, to stand, to work with each other, to persevere. And most of all, let's hold these children. They're not be even our own. Some of them are your children, your grandchildren. And the children that may not be up here. But let's hold them in the palm of our hands. Let's cover them. Let's pray for them. Because, you know, we just don't know. You just had a funeral here the other day. Just two weeks ago. And I know that the holding family, I know parts of the family are still here, still can't come to grips, can't come to terms. Lady Charles, a sudden passing of one of our minister's son, 26 years old, 22 just passed suddenly. But for I know whatever befalls me, easy to me, says so still in it. But Jesus do it all things well. And that is why it is important we do what we can do now because we don't know. We are looking for the rapture, but death can walk in any time. 
And that is why it's so important that we embrace our children. We grow them in the fear of the Lord. I know the whole in family did everything possible for their son. And he grew up in the fear of the Lord. And he did his part for the short time he was here. So let us, we have that responsibility as well. God bless you know, love you know, good to be here. Look forward to the continued worship and looking even more to hear from the woman of God. Thank you. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Gonna have the children at this time with their dad. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your i 
gonna have our offering at this time by Minister Wright and then our praise team one, will do a two, one, two. My brothers and sisters, good morning. Can I invite you all to stand at this time? As we go to the Lord with our gifts, we are going to be worshiping at this time with our tithes and offerings. Eternal Father, no God, we want to thank you for your love and your goodness. We want to give you praise for who you are and for what you are. Certainly, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are here this morning to celebrate you another time. You have brought us throughout the course of another week, and for that we are extremely grateful. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we can say to you, we have already come. We come to celebrate you. We come to lift you up. And we come also to worship with our gifts. Today, as we worship you with our tithes and offering, you see the hands and you see the heart, God, the givers this morning. Many of us, O oh God, or some of us today, give out of nothing. But you have promised in your word that as we give with a genuine intention, the blessing will be returned to us. Help us, God, to be faithful in the giving. Help us to be faithful, God, in our stewardship as it relates to your work here on earth. We ask and pray for your covenant blessing over us as we worship you today with our tithes and offering. These are the mercies we ask. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. The affirmation. As a faith community in Jesus Christ, we pause to offer up a tangible token of worship to the Lord our God as a sincere expression of our appreciation for his faithfulness. As we perform our spiritual act of worship, we acknowledge that it is the Lord who gives us the ability to produce wealth in order to confirm his covenant that he promised by an oath to our spiritual forefathers and to us who are alive and present this day through his word. Today, we affirm and believe our God for career opportunities and better jobs, raises and bonuses, unforeseen benefits, sales and commissions, estate and inheritances, interest and income, gifts and surprises, death right off, uncommon favor, good health and contentment, so save and bodies heal. It's offering time, it's giving time, and it's time to worship. Can you say it's time to worship? Can you say it's time to worship? Hallelujah. For our visitors, Hallelujah. I'm going to be asking you to follow the guidance of the ushers. Brothers and sisters, you would have seen a basket here. The person who will be holding this basket, whatever is deposited in this basket, will go towards the benevolence ministry. There are persons in our congregation and by extension our community who we assist financially. So as you give, I encourage you to drop something in the basket and that will go specifically to the Benevolence Ministry. God bless you. Thank you very much. Our praise team. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the 
Lord. I ask you all to stand at this time. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heaven and Praise Father, Son, and Holy Introducing our speaker, and then um, after which our children will be ministering to us, and then after which you will hear the voice of our speaker. All right? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good. And if you have a praise for a good God this morning, I'm just going to ask you to jump on your feet, man. Jump up with energy and just shout a praise. Wave a hand and say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't have to be here this morning, but my God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm not the speaker today, but I have been tasked with this wonderful opportunity to introduce to you a woman I admire and love. I don't think I've had an opportunity to tell her up close yet, but I do. I've, I've watched her, I've followed her, and I know that here at Bull Bay, you've done the same, and we are looking to hear a lot from her. Bless the Lord. I want to say that Bull Bay is so blessed this morning. We don't just get blessing one, one, but we get blessing double, double. Somebody said double, double. Triple, triple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how good our God is. Today we not only have our Caribbean Women's Ministry Director, but we have our own National Women's Ministries President, Sister Vinette Notice, and her mom visiting with us. And we are so grateful that you are here. Going to greet you all, everyone. Welcome into the house of the Lord. It's good for you to be here. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit about Lady Charles with you so you can know a little more about the lady who will be bringing the word of the Lord. So Reverend Patricia Charles was born Patricia Simpson. She was born and raised in Bilston, which is a small town in the West Midlands of England. Over 50 years ago, her parents, brother and sister Simpson, founded the Church of God in Bilston right there in their living room, and that congregation remains active today. Patricia's musical journey, we know she loves music, right? It began very early with piano lessons at the age of six, and by 12 years old, she was serving as a church organist. Alongside her passion for music, she pursued a career in nursing, becoming a qualified registered nurse and a midwife. She also earned an associate degree in religious education, a bachelor's of ministry, and a master's in counseling. After completing her studies, Patricia immigrated to the United States following her parents. 
Shortly before the move, she met her husband, her future husband, Bishop Ishmael Charles, while he was preaching at a crusade at her church. Their relationship blossomed and they had a long distance, had long distance communication while Bishop was studying there at the School of Theology in Cleveland, Tennessee. Yes, man. And the couple got married in May of 1989. Two months later, Bishop Charles was appointed to pastor a church in the island of Tortola, where he later became the Caribbean field director. And they have two married children, Ishika and Ishroy. They're also blessed with two granddaughters, Grace and Faith. In 1996, Patricia became a licensed minister in the Church of God. Her accomplishments include founding a school of music, operating a thrift store, and releasing three albums with her local choir. She also serves as a Caribbean Women's Discipleship Director and continues her work as a counselor and a teacher of the word. What a way this woman can work, not you? <laughs> Anointed to preach at 16, Patricia has since spoken at numerous seminars and preached across the Caribbean, Europe, Africa, and North and South, South America. She credits all her accomplishments to God's grace and guidance, giving him all the glory for her life's work. Bless the Lord. Can we lift a hand for Sister Charles? Give her a hand. Right? So that's the rehearsal. But after the choir sings and she comes, I'm going to ask you to jump up and give her a, a bull bay welcome. Hallelujah. As she brings the word of the Lord and we hand her over in the care of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be asking the children now to come and to do their, that's a children's choir. They'll be ministering to us at this time.
need to give it up for the Lord. Can you give it up? Can you give it up for the Lord now? Can you just give the Lord a hand clap in this place? Come on, he's worthy of the glory. Father, I thank you today. You are God all by yourself. There is none to compare unto you, mighty God. So we trust you. We believe in the God of our salvation. We come before your presence one more time to give thanks unto you for all that you will do in this house. And you've already done, we bless you. But I pray that the hearts of your people be receptive to your word. Let your purpose, O oh God, let your glory be upon this house. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your spirit. We put it all in your hands as we honor you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Mr. Simon, you're going to have to work with me. You're going to have to take some off the, you may be seated if you can. Turn up all the other. Let me try the other mic. Check, check. We just need to turn up all the other mics and just put me right the way down. Can you hear me? All right. I'm so glad. Can you just move this on the floor for me, please? I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. To be, I didn't even know there was a whole day in Jamaica. So, so I've learned something new. And I'm so many. I want to first greet Bishop, Dr. Fernandan, and his wife, and the children. Also, Lady Dr. Notice for being with me this morning and allow me to be here. When she asked me to stay, because I would have gone home today, actually, but she said, please, can you stay and minister in one of the churches? I said, yeah, okay, that's all right, I don't mind. And I, she said, and then she later, she told me the church where I would be speaking at. And I carried a privilege that my husband, Bishop Charles St. Regan, he's in St. Vincent on another assignment, but I am so glad to be here. My parents are from St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. All right, so I have got the Jamaican roots. Don't look at me like I'm strange now, people. Don't look at me like I don't know nothing about Jamaica. I do know quite a few things about Jamaica. So my parents, both of my parents are from St. Elizabeth. And so, and the church that I, that they started and they live in has been over 60 years. And it's, I was there just a couple of months ago, minister in there. So it's still going. After all this. So I give God thanks. Come on, give the Lord a hand. And I am so blessed. I heard that some people are on the Zoom room, so I am so glad. Okay, you're going to keep your hands off your, off your base for a minute. So we, I, I, I know that there's some people on the Zoom room, and I don't know if they're in here, but a lady just stopped me. She said she's in the Zoom. So I thank all of you that have come on four years, and we're still going. Every morning, I thank God for allowing us for that to happen. But I want to talk to you very briefly. I, the pastor didn't give me no time, so I'm going to try my best to be as short as I can. All right. So I am so blessed to be here this morning. And I, and I was praying, Lady Notice, as you asked me, and God gave me something. I said, God, come on, before I do that, can we give it up for the children? I am so blessed. I love that song, Holy Forever. I like that. I will. Uh, that is one of my favorite songs. And when they dance, I said, "You see, now you won't get me in trouble dancing that song. It's a beautiful song." So thank you. But as I was praying to the Lord and asking the Lord about what to speak, and I've never been here. I don't know your pastor. I don't know anybody. And the Lord gave me a scripture. It's a scripture that we know, but the Lord just gave it in my spirit. I was praying, and the Lord just. Put this scripture in my spirit. Matthew chapter 17, verse 13 and 14. I will read it by Matthew chapter 7, 
verse 13 and 14. He says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there by which go in their act. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. And so as I was reading this um, scripture and I looked at different versions and found so many different versions that talk about this gate. So my, my little thing for you this morning is which way are you on? And it might seem why would she be speaking to a bunch of Christians and asking which way are you on? Because it's so easy to think that we are on the right way. Just because you come to church don't mean you're on the right way. Now y'all got to help me up in here. So if I take off my glasses, it's because I don't want to see your face frowning at me, okay? Because I can't see anything without the glasses. But I want you to understand as I was doing this, it says there is two ways. There is a way that you can be on. And the thing about it, I read something, lady noted, fish. It says usually you go on the way and then you enter into a gate and the gate will lead you to your destiny. So if you're going on the road, when you get to the gate, you go straight into the house. But this is so different. The gate is the first thing that you're going to go through. So you're not on the end of the road. You're walking into the road through the gate. And Jesus was very specific because it was not Matthew speaking or Mark or Luke or John or Paul. It was Jesus that was speaking. If you look at this writing, he said that there is two ways. The Bible tells us, and there's different scriptures says that heaven can, can be entered only through a narrow gate. So there is two walks, and everybody on this road is walking. There is no sitting down. There is no looking back. There is everybody on both of these ways are walking. So when I looked at the scripture and the, and the Holy Ghost says, what way are you walking on? So if I pick you out to use you, don't worry, I like to illustrate my messages sometimes. Because when we look at the two gates, Dr. Notice, the one gate, the Bible, Jesus says, is wide. It's big. The, the, first of all, the gate is so wide that it's easily to be found. But the thing about this gate is that it, it is a wide gate. And many people will find the biggest thing. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Because the biggest thing always looks better. The bigger it is, we think the better it is. A bigger house, a bigger bank book, a bigger whatever you call it. So because this gate is so big and so wide, many people will decide this is going to be good. Oh, glory, help me, hallelujah. This is the way I want to go. And so because we see a lot of people, oh, help me, feel your Holy Ghost. Walking in the, we peep through the gate, Bishop. And we see a lot of people on this gate, on this road. So we said, this got to be the right way. Because so many people are, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, are walking in through that gate. So there's got to be something good at the end of the gate because so many people are following that road. And because we don't want to know God for ourselves, we want to follow the crowd. But it ain't good to follow the crowd. Because you don't know what they're doing or where they're going or how. Help me, Holy Ghost. And because we want company. And we want a whole entourage of people with us. And we look through and said, you know what? There's so many people 
on this road. I'm going to walk this road because I know I'm going to have company. So then because of that, we decide no matter what, we're walking on this road. So, the, so Jesus was specific. He said, many people walk on that road. Many people love that road. I was reading a commentary, Bishop, and he said that people go on that road because, because it's so wide. And I'm going to come down. Is that all right if I come down, Bishop? It's, just, it's, it's as big as this. God just showed me an illustration. I'm going to show you in a minute. And it's so big. I can go wherever I want and do whatever I want. Yeah, hallelujah, Jesus. I can speak to who I want. I can go where I want. It's my self-pleasure on the big road, on the wide road. You can say what you want. You can avoid. I was driving, coming. I wish my drivers was here. They probably are in the car. They're probably afraid of me speaking. And while we was driving, you can avoid all the pot roads, the potholes, all the different things when you're on a wide road because you have enough room to avoid. And they're on a wide road, Bishop. Because the Bible doesn't say it's straight. It just said it's a wide road. So on this road, there are different paths that you can say, oh, I'm fed up. I'm going down here. Oh, I had enough of that, so I'm going over here. I've had enough of that, so I'm going to go straight. And there's enough room for you to turn back on a wide road. And there's so many people on the road, lady, that notice that I can say, I'm going to drop friends with her. I'm going to pick up her as my friend. Oh, glory, help me. Because there are a lot of religious people on the road, on that wide road, because they are looking for something big. But we don't understand that on that road is death. Because we're not seeing it at the beginning. We look at the beautiful. This is, let me tell you this. This big gate is so beautiful. Because the enemy will make sin look attractive. Yeah. It will let it look so attractive that you don't even think about it. You don't think about the decision that you are making. You don't think about what it's going to cost you to get through that big gate. Because it looks beautiful. It probably got some gold notches on it or something attractive to the eyes. And that's the reason why so many people decide I'm going on a big road because it looks too attractive. So that means there got to be something good in there for me. But hear me. Then this is what God said, Jesus said. And this is just perfect. But there is a narrow gate. There is a narrow gate. Straight. Here's this gate. This way. But it is so narrow. I ain't got no room to take nobody with me. And this is so beautiful, Bishop. I know you don't like this here. But, but as you walk on this road... If you come to a pothole, right here, you can't avoid. You can't avoid it. You can't go to the right, nor can you go to the left. Oh, glory, I feel my company, but somebody hold me back. I feel Jesus in my soul. Because when you choose to go to the narrow gate, and walk upon the narrow road, there are going to be times that you stumble because there is a pothole. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. Oh, glory to God. Where, where's your basket? Sweetie, pass me your bag. bag whatever, whatever. Hurry up. But when you're on this road, Bishop, 
We don't understand that you've got no other place to go. So as you are walking, you know that you are by yourself, but you're not by yourself. Because you won't find Jesus on the broad way. Hey! But you're going to find Jesus on the narrow way. And he says when you come to your mountain, this is a mountain. He said when you come to your mountain, he said I will go over it for you. And I will make a way over the mountain. He doesn't stop the mountain. Because you see, honey, you can't go to the right. You can't go to the you got to go forward. you got to go through the mountain. you got to go through the trial. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. You see, when you walk on the road, Jesus said, you see, you all don't understand what I'm saying, church. That, come on, bishop. You're going to be Jesus for one minute. Don't take it to heart now. Go in front of me. On this road, Jesus said, don't you know? I know the way that you take. He said, I know the path that you're walking on. I'm not a stranger to this path. Oh, glory be to God. Because when they left me by myself, Oh, God. Jesus said, I know what it is to be by myself because I was left on a cross. Oh, God. I was left to walk. He said, so as you walk, stop looking at me, Bishop. So as he's walking, don't go too fast because I know you're a man and you like to go fast. He said, as you walk, I know the path that you're going to take. So when you're going on, Walk slowly, Bishop. And as he walks, he comes to the mountain before you did. Hey. I fear my spirit keeper. He'll get to the mountain before you get to the mountain. And he said, got you any mountains that you can't tunnel through? God specializes. And things seem impossible. But the thing about it is, he will show you there was a tunnel, but I have the authority. I have the ability to tunnel through. He said, daughter, keep on walking. Hold on, brother. I want them to hear me. He said, keep on walking. He said, because Jesus said you can speak to the mountain. And as you speak to the mountain, man, and get out of my way. I feel him. But hear me, Bishop. Come behind me now. He said, I'm behind you. To push you. I feel him in my spirit. I feel my company keeps him up. Because sometimes, what will be bishop? How I feel the Holy Ghost. As you walk, you come to a storm. It's a big storm. Blockages are in your way. Sometimes on this way, there are people blocking you. You see this thing? It's false, right? Yes, it is. Some false people. Fake people. And you stop and say, but God, this one, I can't manage. This one too big. Too many leaves. Too many branches. But God said, Jesus will be behind you. And he said, daughter, 
Don't look at the fakeness. Amen. Don't look that it's too big Amen. or too wide that is blocking your entrance. Because some people will block your entrance. Some people will block your entrance. I can't go left and I can't go right. So you come before you may be behind me and say, keep on walking. Because all I want to do is stop and cry and say, God, I can't do it. But this is what God will say. No, you're a man and I don't want nobody to be a come, come. The Holy Spirit will hold you. And he keeps saying, keep on walking. You've got a destiny to get to. You've got somewhere to be. Heaven is still your goal. Hey, you've got to press for the mark, for the prize. So he said, keep on going. But hear me. Just I was about to push. Up comes And I feel like I can't do it. I can't move it. Where are you going? I can't move it. But then I feel something helping me. Helping me move it. I feel a pressure say press. 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 Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Eventually, what seems to block you will have to move it. You ain't got no strength, buddy. Move it, Bishop. Can you move it? Bishop, you're supposed to be strong, filled with stone. Oh, now come get it out of the way. You got to understand. It was heavy. I couldn't do it. But then God, 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 the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm before you. I'm not going to leave you. You thought you were going to row off the path. Because right next to the straight path is the broad way. And if we get lazy, it's easy to jump off and go where it's easy. And say, I could have avoided it if I went on the broad way. But God is saying, no, you can't do that. I need you to stay where you are. I want you to go through what you're going through. It may be hard. It may be rough. It may get lonely. You may feel you can't make it. But he said, I promise you that I'm going to send you a comforter. Feel him in my spirit. And he said, no matter if they talk about you, no matter if they malign you, no matter what they do against you, keep on the road. Keep on the narrow road. Hear this. Feel him. Come here, sister. People saying, but why? Just, no, 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 don't you come. Just do the hand movement. Just, just come and keep coming. And if you don't look at the prize, because we see that there, I wish there was another thing in my way. That, put that, that chair. Put that chair right there. Lay it. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Bishop. Bring it a little closer. you to miss it. You see, you're coming to a place. Come down here, baby. Oh, God, I just lost my job. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. My husband is playing hooky on me. What to do? The Holy Spirit's behind me. But it's rocky. And somebody said, you don't need to go through that. Come. 
come. I go forward. I go up. Go. And here's Jesus saying, come. <laughs> but I thank God. It's not safe. I'd rather go over there. I want to go over there. And I'm, it's easy. It's easy for me to go over there. But Jesus said, come. And I'm saying, God, but what if I lose my job? What if I lose my sanity? I don't know what else to do. What if I lose what I am doing? But I, he started to tell me, he's calling me, come on, call us some promises. So he said, but she said, come. You see, there is no rocket in your way. There's nothing to stop you. You don't need promises. Promises can't help. So he's telling you, come over here. The enemy said, come this way. I got better for you. But God said, yes, I see what you're about to face. But if you trust me, it may seem unstable. But you've got to understand that I went on it before you did. Good God Almighty. And I have to stop getting distracted. Too many people in church are distracted. you got friends that are distracting you. you got family that's distracting you. you got circumstances distracting you. Talking to somebody. You're holding on to that boyfriend. Oh. And he's distracting you. Because he promised you this and that. And the devil is saying, this job will be an easier job for you. Follow me. Oh. But God said, no matter what, it may be hard. But he said, I am underneath you. Oh. Keep on the narrow way. He said, keep walking, but I'm still tempted to go off. But God said, for every temptation, there is a way of escape. The devil don't have to get you. You don't have to give in to the enemy. You don't have to do what the enemy says. And he's still calling you. Pick up, pick up those little bags. The two of them. And this mimic, because that's not real leather. And he said, look at this. This is not the Gucci. It looks Gucci, but it ain't Gucci. Oh, my God. But it looks good. Come. Is that, is that a Louis Vuitton? Probably not a real one. So they say. So give it to the, give it to the bishop. I'm going to pretend that's a real one. And the thing is, that looks good. But God, he's a genuine God. He ain't going to give you no fake. The Bible says sometimes it gets rocky. It gets rocky. The storms are bashing me from side to side. I don't want to give up. But I'm looking at the promise. I may have to stop for a while. And take a rest. But I'm not going to give up. Yay! Ha! Flash it all you want, devil. It's not worth my soul. So I got to keep walking. I may fall down. But the Holy Ghost said, I will lift you up. So I'm going to keep on going. And the devil says, what other thing can I put in a way? But you understand now, this is why I'm going to get into trouble, Bishop. Because he's going to sin. Please excuse me. Come. Then a young man. 
This is an older man that is saying to me, you remember the, the prophet and the old prophet and the new prophet and the young prophet? And the old prophet said to the new prophet, but I hear from God. And the old prophet said, I too have heard from an angel. But the, new, the young prophet had heard from God. You must listen to what people say to you. There's a difference to, to hear from God than to say what's a third, second-hand information. So the old prophet just gave the man, the young prophet, a second-hand information. When you know who you are in God, even if the older prophet, you understand what I'm trying to say now? Because I'm going to beat on the old people, forgive me. Some of you need to sit down and leave some young people alone. Because you're telling them some wrong things. And young people, you need to get a relationship and an encounter with God. Let me drop this in right here. I'm just dropping it because I feel like dropping it. You go and say that you're in the pastor. Listen, when I was marrying Bishop Charles, or about to, now you know you're Jamaican. Are we Jamaican? When I was going to marry Bishop Charles, because he's from St. Vincent, where Bishop is from, I was told by the older persons, don't marry him. He's from a small island. He got nothing good for him. Every story I could have heard. But because I had an encounter and a relationship with God, God said, don't listen to them. Stay on your narrow road. They want to take you from your destiny by telling you, don't marry to that man. They don't know where I am taking you. So many times, we don't know where we are taking. God is taking us. So some older person who we respect will come and tell you, leave that path. But when you have a relationship with God, no disrespect, but God can talk to me too. And I'm not about to leave this narrow road to follow the broad way. We're there walking. And my thing is, Bishop, my thing is, you're going to come over there. Please, sorry. Stay right there. There is a choice. Children of God, musician, but we're not here in Jamaica, in Bull Bay, but there are musicians today who can't wait on God. So they're Hopping up and off the roads. They're playing for secular today. They want to come in your church on Saturday, Sunday morning and play. And what we don't understand, the influence of music, what it's doing to the churches. Because we're afraid to tell the music, go sit down and get some anointing. When you get anointing, come back and sing. Come back and play. I had musicians, Bishop. And I told the one musician one time, if you, and please forgive me, but I said to him, if you don't bring your tithes, because we don't understand tithe is not about money, it's about obedience. And he played, he said, you're not giving nothing to God. Watch people who are going to, be, who are going to backslide. The first thing they do is stop paying their tithes. And I said to him, if you don't do what you do need to do for God, then like me, I'm going to sit you down Sunday morning. And if I could clap my hands and play the tambourine, that's what we're going to do. Well, Bishop, before the day was done, he brought his tithe. Because we play with God. I put the choir down because the Lord said to me, put the choir down. 
didn't tell me why. He said, put them down. Every choir practice, we came and we prayed. We didn't sing on the Sunday morning. All we did was pray in the week. At the end of that fasting and prayer, I think it was about a month or two. Who wasn't sleeping with who? Who wasn't coming? Listen to me. Somebody got to have a discerning spirit. Somebody got to discern when people are sinning and say something. Now I lost half a year because half of you don't want to tell nobody nothing. Because when you are on this narrow road, Bishop, you can't have friends. You can't compromise. You can't afford to lower your standard. Because God is not lowering his standard just because he loves you. His standard is holiness regardless of who you are. God will love you and watch you go to hell. Because that is your choice. I'm an old-fashioned preacher. I, if it was my daughter, doctor knows it, I'd sit her down. When she did a foolishness, I said, you're not touching God's keyboard. Sit down. The, I love it, the narrow road lifestyle. You can take it and preach it when I'm gone. When you're on this road, you can't afford to keep your eyes off the price. You can't afford to stop looking at what is ahead. Because Jesus, listen, Jesus told us in the word that I read, what is at the end of the narrow road and what is at the end of the broad road. He made sure he told us that. So anytime you feel like you want to give up, you have to say, I have to remember what he said. I got to remember the word. Why? Where are you going to stay with people on the broad road just because they won't come with you in the narrow road? Does it make sense? Why are you going to go to hell? Because you want your friend's company. Talking to somebody. Bishop, I don't care what they say about you. This is where I take off my glasses. I don't care, first lady, what they call you. Because I could write a book on what they call me. Because I'm a straight person, probably too straight sometimes. But I believe in telling the truth. And I don't believe in sugarcoating the truth. There's some people who like to sugarcoat the truth. Well, it was just a mistake. Show me in the Bible when it says there's a mistake. It is sin. And the only remedy for sin is repentance. Not I am sorry. It's I repent and turn away from. So Bishop, stay on your ledge. Don't follow the rest of them. Stay on the ledge. If God has given you a vision, stay on the ledge. Bishop, I'm going to say this. They're going to say, well, we never did it like this before. Tell them what well, we're doing it like this now. Because sometimes what we keep doing is on the broad way. Because you don't want to go through what it takes. I see your building when we came. When we were driving, coming like, Passed this about three times. Not because there was no sign up. Because I saw a picture of it, what it was before. And I said, but that don't look like the building I see on your Facebook. So I'm looking for this. You know how you were before? On the outside. And on the outside, it looks so pretty and nice. I said, but that don't look like what I'm seeing on the Facebook. 
And the guy will say, but this is where it tells me the church is. I said, but that don't look like the building. So we had to drive in. And we asked the parent, are you, one of you over there, is this the New Testament church of God? Well, okay. But you see, you don't understand. God is renovating you. He's given you a makeover. So some people don't want to come in yet because they think you don't look good on the outside. Oh. <laughs> and they're trying to avoid because they say, but that don't look like. But the, I preached about it yesterday, about the, about the, the ego. How sometimes the ego don't look good when it's going through its time of change. And it doesn't look beautiful, Bishop. It looks, but, but you don't understand that something is working on the inside. While you are trying to fashion the outside, God is working on the inside of this sanctuary. He's working on the people on the inside. He said, by the time you finish the out, oh God. By the time you finish the outside, the inside of this sanctuary of people is going to be different. Look out. God is about to do something different. Sit down, baby. I know you're tired. When you are walking, because I need to talk to some people today. When you are walking, Stop following the fake. Stop following the fake. Because the fake won't last long. Let me tell you this. The genuine article will never be on sale. I was reading this, Dr. Notice. And they said, if you find a Louis Vuitton on sale, it's not. Because Louis Vuitton never puts his products on sale. Whatever the price is, is the price. So let me say this. Yes, Bishop. So when you see some things on sale, like a cheap gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ will never change its price. The price is the blood of Jesus. And you can only be saved through the blood of Jesus. And you can only be kept by the Holy Ghost. If somebody tells you there is a different way, it is a fake Louis Vuitton. It will never be on sale. So if you want to serve God, you have no choice but to follow the path because you don't understand what it cost that man, Louis Vuitton, or whatever his name is, to make that product. He stands by his name. And he said, I won't allow, and people are good. The enemy, that's what the Bible says. It just came to me. The enemy is like a roaring lion. And all the devil does is fake the real. And if we understand, so he will say, you can say what you want in church. You can do what you want. You ain't got to do all the pastor say. You ain't got to do all of that. You don't have to speak in tongues anymore. That went away in the day of, of, of Pentecost. There's no, there's no Holy Ghost. You don't need him. You don't need the Holy Ghost. You don't need that at all. You can still function, but you are functioning, but you're not anointed. There's a difference. And so what people are doing in church, they are functioning, but they are not anointed. There's a different anointing makes you a more effective. When you are not anointed, you are not effective. You're using your skills and your talents, but that will only take you so far. It is only the anointing that can destroy yokes and remove burdens. Your fake mentality ain't going to remove no burdens or destroy any yokes. That's the reason why people are sitting in church with demons and nothing in happening. They're 
feel comfortable in your church because there ain't no anointing to move any demon to cause demons to run out of your church. You don't have to invite me back. That's all right. So our churches are filled with demon-possessed people because there is no anointing. When you start to sing a Holy Ghost anointed song, they're either going to run out the door, they're going to run to the altar. That's the only choice they will have is either deliverance. So we settle. Bishop, I heard I say this, we say this. It's not the quantity, it's the quantity. We say, we, we, we look at the quantity. But God looks at the quality. What people want is quantity. And because we are together doesn't mean we are united. So God is looking at the quality. That's the reason why he said Jesus was specific. And said that gate is narrow. And because it's such a straight, restrictive, restricted path, there's no wiggle room to do what you want. It's restricted to stay. It's restricted. And because people don't like rules, hey. because people don't like principles, Shoots. That's too restricted for me. I don't want to be there. But stay on your Broadway. At the end of your Broadway is destruction. I'd rather. I don't know if this is somebody in here or watching us, but I hear the Holy Ghost telling a young lady, you're staying with that man because of what he can give you, but it might just cost you your life. I'm talking to somebody. I just heard the Holy Ghost say to tell this young lady, you're staying there because of what he can give you, but it might just cost you your life. for somebody. Tears are falling down your face right now. They said you have a choice. I'm talking to somebody again today. Bishop, if they want to go, let them go. You can't bring everybody with you. Because the higher you go, the less people are going to want to go with you. Because it's going to cost you something. You don't understand. You don't understand what it costs me to leave my friends and family and go to a small place like Tartola. And I was telling them yesterday, I worked in the hospital for 10 years. And it wasn't 10 years of me. Bishop, they didn't like me because of the truth. And those in charge would do all kinds of things to me. I was pregnant. And we have easy wards you can walk on when you're pregnant. Because obviously I was pregnant. And this one woman didn't like me so much. She put two of us who were pregnant on the heaviest ward to lift the heaviest patient. And I was pregnant. I said, God. He said, I'm with you. It won't last. And I spent 10 years going through the narrow road and the process. Being called all kind of names. Being degraded. Because of who I was in Christ. And it was easy for me to, to compromise. 
but it's not going to cost me my soul. And you've got to stay on the narrow road. There may be problems right now in your family, on your job, or wherever. But remember, if God put you there, he'll keep you. And here, let me say this. Faith will save you, but it's the Holy Spirit that keeps you. Teach the Holy, the children, the Holy Ghost again. They need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. We are putting them to do things and they have no Holy Ghost. Make sure your ushers are full with the Holy Ghost. So when a demon-possessed man walk through the church, they will recognize something ain't right. We need back the watchmen and women. First lady, keep strong. Don't let go of your vision. God has given you a vision for this house. You look now, it don't seem possible. But the Bible said in due time it shall speak. Keep a hold of your vision. I'm finished. I'm talking to some people this morning that want to stop because it got too hard and sometimes you just get out of one pothole step right into another step right into a mountain go into the fire go into a, a valley go into illness it's like it just keeps on coming and it keeps on coming but God said despite what you're in I am with you I'm going to be with you through it because I went before you. But whatever you do, don't get off the road. But the broad way will give you choices. Will make you avoid the trials because the Bible says this is light affliction. We have to go through trials. Bear it in mind. We have to. You cannot avoid them. So stop trying to divert and do a detour. There's too many signs from the enemy say detour. And when you detour, you avoid. But God don't want you to avoid. He wants to show you that he can bring you through so he can get the glory. And that people can honor God. Because they'll say, how did you get through that? And when, let me say this as I bring it in, Bishop. When you avoid those things, you stop God from getting the glory. Because it will take a miracle to take you through some things you are going through. And only God is a God of miracles. So when you come through with that miracle bishop, they're going to have to say it has to be God. The doctors are going to have to say this has to be God. The only way you got over this sickness, it had to be something else. It wasn't my doing and therefore God will be glorified. The enemy don't want God to get any glory. But I beseech you therefore brethren that you present yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable. Mm. Talking to somebody, Bishop. Somebody's playing church. Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody's playing church. You know how to put on the right clothes and the right shoes. And we know how to mimic the steps. And 
to mimic the dance. But on the inside, we are filthy. And God said to tell somebody in the house now I'm talking. Stop playing church. There's a day of reckoning coming. I'm about to reveal the true Louis Vuitton. I'm about to reveal those that are fake. I'm about to show who are true. And the stitches will not break easily. And a true Louis, Louis Vuitton, you can stop it. You can do all kinds of things that it will not break. It will sustain. This morning, Bull Bay New Testament Church of God, I'm warning you, stay on the narrow road. You may be seated, Bishop. You can be seated. Thank you. Stay. Take it up for me. Thank you, baby. Stay on the narrow road. Because there are too many people trying to get people to come up and out of their position and out of alignment. Because when you're on the narrow road, Bishop, I just, the, the Holy Ghost just brought me this, said this to me. Come back here one more time. Come here, sister. Come, come, come. Come, come, you too. Bishop, Bishop, come, be in front. Go in front of your wife. Go in front of your wife. Just stay right here. Face, come down. Turn and face that way. You see this? What do you see? Tell me what you see. You see perfect synchronization and alignment. So where the bishop goes, we are going. There's nobody out of sync. When you are on the narrow road, you're going to stay focused on the, what the leader is doing. Paul said, as long as I follow Christ, follow me. And you're going to stay in alignment. And you're going to keep walking. There's no room for you to overtake the bishop. The only way you're going to overtake the bishop if you come off the road and you start doing your own thing. I hear my company keeper. But as long as you stay on the narrow road, you will be in alignment and you will be synchronizing. Bishop, if you see anybody deviating, say it's time for you to sit down. God's road has no deviation. Lady Lotus, as long as they stay in alignment with you, keep them. But when they start saying things that come contrary, let them go. My company keep. They don't need to look and see where he's going. Follow. Follow. Because if he is a servant of God, or whichever leader it may be, is a servant of God, you will know if it's a servant of God. Because your spirit will be in tune with his spirit. That's when you will know that they're going right. And if your leader ain't got, not going right, it ain't for you to take him out of the way. Let God take him out of the way. God will take him out of the way. Don't you worry. God won't allow people to bring shame to his name. If your leader is not in alignment with the word of God, just keep on praying, because one day, God going to take him out. I want to close, you know, but God keeps telling me these things. Some people are holding on to things like it's theirs. Like they, they, it's their ministry. It's their group. It's their this. I'm in charge. It's mine. It ain't yours. God pulls up one and pulls down another. 
It's his glory. It's his ministry. Touching everything this morning. Because we are fed up of hearing my ministry, my ladies, my youths, my music department, my worship leader, my AV, mine, mine, mine. The last person that said I am mine is sitting in here. It is not yours. You are just an instrument that is allowed to use. And now today, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, he'll move you out the way. And he will use another. Because we know the talents of ten and five and one. And the one had one. And he said, it's my money. It's my money. Let me dig a hole and put it in there. Because he was expecting the, the person to come, the Lord to come and give him back his penny. And instead he said, give it to me and gave it to somebody else. my version. This morning, church, I'm close for real. There is an hour road. I'm talking to some people. If we want to see a change in Jamaica, then things are going to have to change. It takes this church to start it. I'm not saying it is. It just takes this one. Then let it be bishop. I just found that you just came here. You don't know a lot of things and probably don't know a lot of people's names still. But don't seek to know their name as much as you need to know their spirit. I'm going to say this. Lady, Ferdinand, be careful of people that say, oh, I want to be close to you. I want to be your friend. If anybody in the church say, oh, I want to be your friend, say thank you, but no thank you. worst thing anybody could have said to me in ministry is I want to be your friend. You don't need to be close to me. Get close to God. And when you get close to God, you'll start to see what God is doing and we won't have a problem. Bishop, be careful who wants to be around you. I don't know the people here. I'm just saying. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And if he shows you something, don't double guess God. God, don't make no mistake. You and your wife come together and pray. And let God show you. Because there's some people itching to come to two of you. And tell you, my sister Jane and my... Be careful of sister so-and-so. And hear what they're saying, Dr. Nozzi. But don't say hi, say. I don't know where this is coming from, Lady Lotus. But I'm warning you. Don't get caught into what everything everybody says. Try the spirits. See if it is of God. You are, I'm, not, I'm going to say you are, I'm not going to say you're supposed to be. You are a man of God. Listen to God. Yes. Go in prayer and fasting for the season. Yes. And they'll say, come over to my house and eat, Bishop. Stay in your yard. sorry about that. I just had to drop that in. Because some people use that. They say, well, the bishop was at my house eating. I was at the church for 33 years. And if I, if I ate, they didn't notice at five people's house, that was a lot. Because they never have the right to say, she always at my house eating my food. The same people they say hallelujah in church. So I know how to cook. 
There was one time this man said he was a bakery. He said, as long as you in Tartu, you never have to bake bread. I'll always give you bread. But I got more sense than that. I used to buy my bread. If you bring it, you bring it. And then when he got upset and left the church, what would have happened to my bread? But I learned I don't depend on man. And I'm warning today on the 29th of September, 2024, any woman, I'm going to say it like the Holy Ghost is giving it to me, that's going to try to bring down this man of God, fire is going to burn you. Mark my words. You will feel the wrath of God's hand. Stay covered. In the name of Jesus. What happened in the past is not going to happen again in this house. I don't know the history of this house. But God says to say what happened in the past is not going to happen again. This is a new season. The same God, but a new season. It, this is a Joshua generation. You're in the house today. Where my keyboard player? He gone? Just you alone. Just play something soft for me. It's a woman's thing or a children's thing or whatever. Every leader that is in this house, can you please come forward and help me? I'm talking to, I want to deal with every leader. If you're a leader in this house at this present moment, please come here. usually I am not a prophetess I don't ever say that whether you're leading if you're a leader on the AV come down I want everybody come on quickly I don't have much time let me tell you something leaders don't sing just play softly keep going you charge. But you can't stay with the anointing that is in this house. Don't let God move you. I'm here to tell you, I don't know why she brought me to this church. That's been with all other churches that want me to, to go there. And I believe she was led by the Holy Spirit. tell you leaders, I can't see your face if you're smiling or you're vexed, it don't matter to me. Listen, this is a season of change. Get in the spirit of the vision that is in this house today. Man. Get in the vision of what God is doing. Because God is going to fulfill his vision with or without you. Worship leaders, I'm a worshiper, I'm a singer, I'm a player. I'm listening intensively when I go to a church on the music. Get anointed. Don't just sing a song, get an anointed song. I don't ever sing the latest song. Because the latest songs are not always anointed songs. Leaders, I'm asking you today to 
say in your heart that you will leave with integrity, that you will leave it with anointing, and that you will follow the leader that God has placed in this season. I'm asking you leaders, I beseech you leaders, I don't know why I'm going emotional. Please, ensure you are walking in the anointing. Because God said he's going to put such an anointing in this house. And if you are not walking in the anointing, it will destroy you. You don't want me to say that, but I'm telling you what the Lord told me to say. There will be such an anointing in the house that you're going to have, you are going to have to be the watchman, the women. Cover, let me tell you this, cover your families because there will be an attack. It's going to cost you to be in leadership in this house. Cover your children and your spouses. Cover them. Because it's going to be different in this season. Lady notice I'm going to hear about it. I'm going to hear about it. Because there's going to be a different in this house. If you notice, I walk almost the length of this. And it was on the road. I don't know how God just let me see it when I was speaking. This is the threshold that God said you're going to have to walk. And if they can't follow you, then you don't need them. Leaders, I beseech you this morning to check your anointing. Check who you are. Because in this season, there's going to be a change. I don't know what you were used to, but there's going to be an anointing in this house that's going to change this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every leader in the house that is standing at this altar. Oh God, reveal who they are. Reveal their hearts this morning that they will know that you are God of this house. This is your house. This is your house. This is your house. So I pray, Father, that you will cause them to understand it's a new season. And you will call them to stand. You are seeing them. And as they stand before your holy altar today, let them stand in unity and not just together, but in unity in mind, in spirit, and in soul with your leader for this time. I 